to questions at this point, starting with Madame Dancho. Please go ahead. Six minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Minister, and to your officials for being here today. Minister, I know that you've um, gone across the country, as have I, and met with police forces. Uh, what I'm hearing is that they are stretched quite thin. Are you hearing the same thing? Um, Thank you, Ms. Dancho. Uh, there's no doubt that we need to support law enforcement, domestic law enforcement, and one of the reasons that's one of the reasons why. So, sorry, we Minister, have, what uh, I'm asking is, have you also heard that police? Sorry, forces, if I could just, if I could just complete the What I'm asking is, if you have heard that police forces are their resources are stretched quite thin, they're they're having challenges keeping up with the crime that we're seeing. That's what I have heard. Do you agree? I was trying to uh, complete my answer, Ms. Dancho, yes and, and I think I'm being responsive to your question, which is that I acknowledge that we need to support domestic law enforcement, which is what we are doing through our anti-guns and gangs uh, fund. Those resources are being transferred to provincial and territorial partners, which in turn filters through to domestic police, and we'll continue to do that. Thank you, Minister. So I would, I would take that as a tacit yes. You would agree that police resources uh, are stretched thin and they require more resources. Um, we're also seeing violent crime has increased over the past seven years by 32 percent. Are you familiar with that statistic? I'm alarmed by it, which is why we can't accept mm. the status quo. The Violent Crime Severity Index is also up 18 points, and there were more than 124,000 additional violent crimes last year than in 2015. Are you familiar with that as well? I am, which is why we presented Bill C-21. The vast majority of gun crime is caused by gangs and criminals using illegally obtained firearms. Do you agree? Which is why we've got new tools in Bill C-21 to combat organized crime. According to Toronto Police, guns smuggled in from the United States represent upwards of 9 out of 10 handguns used in crime. Do you agree? Which is why we invested $321 million since last year and seized a record number of guns last year at the border. During the 2019 federal campaign, the Liberal platform stated that your confiscation regime of firearms would cost between $400 and $600 million. Recent estimates put it upwards of $5 billion. Uh, that's considerably more money than you're investing in additional border protection. Is that correct? Well, I would begin by saying that assault-style rifles have no place in our communities, which is why we want to implement a buyback program to get them out once and for all. Are you? Will you be spending, according to your federal campaign, four hundred to six hundred million? Estimates say it may be upward of five billion. That's considerably more than you've invested in recent years in the border. It's also considerably more than your communities fund. Correct. Well, I would say two things in response to that question, Ms. Dancho. First, we plan to be very transparent about the costing around the buyback program, but I also want to be clear with you and all members of this committee that there is no way to put a price on a life lost, and all you have to do is look into the eyes of any of the families who've lost somebody to an assault-style rifle. I think it is very concerning that we're seeing a rise of gun violence in our cities, and as I've outlined, and, and you seem to have agreed that the the problem certainly is gun smuggling, but you're investing considerably less money in border enforcement and considerably less money in community protection, although you've acknowledged that that is the primary source of gun violence in our country. I do want to switch gears a little bit and talk about firearms owners. I am a firearm owner. Uh, we undergo rigorous licensing processes. We're trained, tested, and vetted. Would you agree? We do, and I respect law-abiding gun owners. I've visited with their communities. I know that they place safety as a premium value. There is the, you may be familiar with the Liberal Long Gun Registry from the 90s. It was estimated to cost about $2 million annually to administer. I'm sure you're familiar with this. It ended up costing $1.2 billion. So the estimates from your government that you may be spending 400 to $600 million now, estimates are saying perhaps upwards of $500 billion, or $5 billion, pardon me. It's you didn't mean $500 billion. $5 right? billion. Okay. Uh, Well, you never know. Based on your <laughs> Liberal track <laughs> record, there is considerable uh, questions to be had about how much you're going to be spending on the confiscation regime. So, Minister, I'm quite concerned of recent news that, ha that your government will be redirecting police resources, which we've outlined today in our conversation, are stretched quite thin dealing with a 32% increase in violent crime since your government's been office. Uh, you're planning to redirect RCMP resources and possibly other police resources to your confiscation regime. Can you comment on that? Well, I think that it's based on some false assumptions, which so is So you that, won't be redirecting our CMP resources? Well, again, if I could just be permitted to answer your question, which is a thoughtful one. Um, ensuring that police services who operate within provincial boundaries have the resources necessary to enforce laws to keep our communities safe is not mutually exclusive to buying back assault-style rifles. And the reason is simple. Those guns were designed 
with one purpose in mind, and that is to kill. And so we believe that by taking them out of our communities you with the buyback your program, with fair Minister, compensation, if I may just conclude, that we will be I would, I would urge you safer. to reconsider redirecting police resources to your confiscation regime. I think it is reckless and will further endanger our communities, Minister. Thank you, Chair. We respectfully disagree about that.